So I'm sure there's a lot of you out there that are like me that wake up in the middle of the night and you just can't get back to sleep because you know well deer season's done turkey season isn't for a couple of months um, after next weekend when the Chiefs play in the Super Bowl there's not going to be any football for a while and so you know what am I going to do with all my free time now obviously I'm not going to finish any of the other projects that I've started um, basement still needs some trim on it and uh, I need a shed built out back but uh, you know those things are never going to get done so what am I going to do with my time now and I think it's obvious um, I have to start a new project another one that I'll probably never finish but you know my favorite thing is to start projects um, if you've watched any of my other videos down here in the basement before you've probably noticed off over this direction I have a handful of reloading presses and a bunch of components and stuff over here and so besides hunting and a little bit of competitive shooting I do a fair amount of reloading for both rifles and pistols I got into it kind of as a hobby in college and um, you know as those things go sooner or later it's it, it kind of spirals from there and you know I found that reloading is one of those hobbies that I, I really enjoy growing up on the farm um, we always had something mechanical to tinker on whether it's cars or trucks or tractors or what have you um, there's something to do with your hands and taking a, a job that I spend a lot of my time behind a desk now and I kinda live in a urban area I don't have room for lots of cars and trucks and tractors let alone the budget for them so um, I found that reloading is something that I can do with my hands that kinda satisfies a lot of that urge to tinker. Uh, this is off to the side here most of my equipment that I use for my normal reloading processes uh, I've got your RCBS rock chucker I think almost everybody has one of those and I've got a Dillon 650 uh, pardon me Dillon 550 and uh, Dillon 450 um, 550 I use for pretty much everything right now it's set up as a processing tool head for uh, processing 65 Creedmoor brass and then the 450 is actually dedicated just for loading 6.5 Creedmoor I've got a um, star lube sizer press over there for uh, lubing cast bullets which I also do when I have free time so I've, I've got a handful of stuff you know piece of equipment here that are fun to tinker with and I think a lot of people recognize but one of the other things that I really enjoy about reloading is I actually collect antique vintage unusual whatever you want to call it reloading presses and I think it's really interesting to see kind of how the technology has changed over the years and uh, the wide variety of ways people have come up tried to address you know a solution to a problem uh, there's many ways of, of doing this and it's interesting to see all the different approaches that companies or individuals have taken over the years so this may, brings me back around to my what's my next project here and so I've been kicking around the idea of starting a YouTube series on my channel about antique unusual collectible reloading presses um, besides my normal three or four presses that I have set up here for kind of daily use I have oh, going on about 20 um, kind of collectible presses at the moment and always looking for some additional ones so um, I'd kind of like to go through some of these, uh, dedicate a video to each one of them that I have or a you know, set of them that I have and kind of explain the history behind some of them, um, kind of quirks of them, things I find interesting about them. And uh, so I'm going to try doing that. No promises on timing on any of them. Some of these things take a long time to research the history on and, um, you know, I'll get to them when I get to them. But um, two of them that I have setting out here are kind of two of my favorites right at the moment. Um, this is a very early example of reloading tool. 
This is a CV Schmidt Model 12 from the 1920s. Um, really interesting piece of equipment. Not a lot of them you see out there. And so I, I'm really happy I managed to find this one um, at a very, 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 very reasonable price. Some of these um, tools are more collectible than others and some of them fetch just absolutely ridiculous prices and obviously I don't have any of those unless I've stumbled into a real bargain on them. Another interesting one is this Mepos gun shop uh, reloader here. Can't remember the date right off the top of my head but this is a, a very interesting um, one built kind of one off by a company. I'm going to drag a couple more out here and, and show you some examples of some other ones here too. So these critters are the great, great, great grandparents of my RCBS rock chucker over here. These are two of the very early reloading press options from RCBS. There's actually one um, press that's earlier than this one. It's very hard to find. I'm still looking for one. Um, this is what they call the Model A. There's one that's referred to as the Pre-A. I don't know that it actually had a designation from RCBS as far as a model number, um, but I'm still looking for that one. This is the 2A, and there's actually a couple of them after this before uh, you get to the Rock Chucker series. So, um, real early RCBS history. Um, really interesting presses. I'm going to dedicate a video just to these guys at some point. I have a fairly small collection of inline progressive reloading presses. Um, ones like the RCBS Green Machine here. This is a really interesting story behind this series of presses. Um, I'm going to again have a video just on these. Um, but anybody that's had one of these knows that they're quirky. Uh, similar is the Cougar and Hunter. This is a restoration project in progress. Obviously there's some parts missing and I'm working on rebuilding or tracking down parts for that. And then another example would be the, the CH. This is a um, Mark II. And I've had a Mark IV as well, but I sold that one. Um, so I've got a couple of inline progressives. These are fascinating machines and I'll do some videos on some of these guys. And I even have a couple of presses like this guy here that I have no idea what the backstory is. Um, this one is set up in 38 Special and kind of deciphering what's going on with it. Somebody put a lot of hours into this and I'm really excited about talking about this one. This will probably be one of my first videos um, because to me this one is probably the most fascinating piece that I have so far. So, uh, I don't know if people are going to be interested in this and all this at all, but um, I find YouTube to be a great resource when I'm trying to find information about something. So some of these presses people have never seen before. Um, I know I try to track down information and some of these there's not a lot out there. So uh, I'd like to try to document some of this. I'll probably get some of my dates and facts and names and all that stuff wrong. Feel free to correct me if you have any of this stuff. Um, and like to add something, please reach out to me. If you have something unusual you don't know about, I'd be interested in seeing it. If you have any of these that you'd like to gift my way for a very small donation, also interested in that. Always room for the collection to grow here a little bit. So, um, hope you guys are interested, and you know, I'll uh, I'll try to keep these going. So, um, stay tuned. Uh, if you subscribe, you know, you'll get a notification that when I get one put together and put out there. So I'm going to do my best. Like I said, I need another project, I guess, with all my free time. So this is going to be one I attempt to tackle now. So thanks, everybody.